Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Bernardo de Vega from Brazilian Rare Earths. Dr. de Vega, how are you today? I'm well, thanks, Tracy. My goodness, I was looking at your entrepreneurial background, you know, because I was wondering how you took Brazilian Rare Earths from nowhere in October 2023 to virtually a billion dollar market cap in one of the largest high grade rare earth deposits in the world. So I'm going to start with your background. You're quite the entrepreneur. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you decided to get into rare earths? Um, by luck, really. Uh, I was coming out of a divorce. I had left uh, my previous business, which was an iron ore business, which I owned in conjunction with my ex-wife. I had to find something new to do, and you know what they say, I think it's a necessity is a great motivator. And so we started looking around Brazil, looking for projects. I wanted to stay in Brazil at that point. I'd spent over a decade running mining companies in Brazil uh, and been very successful doing that. Um, and so I thought I, did, I, I developed some pretty strong um, networks and uh, some in-country know-how. You know, running things in Brazil has its own nuances and knowing how to operate that jurisdiction really helps. Being Brazilian also helps. Um, so we just started looking around and looking for different opportunities and this amazing project came our way and we grabbed it with uh, you know, all our attention and I've dedicated my life to it since. Well, we certainly all had necessity in our life, but you seem to be defying gravity with the potential that I'm reading from your numbers for Brazilian rare earths, and you've done quite a bit of drilling. Can you give our audience more of an overview on your drilling program and, and the numbers that you have? Yeah, so, I mean, Brazilian rare earths has undoubtedly discovered uh, what appears to be, based on the information I've seen publicly, the highest grade deposit in the world. Um, our average drilling grades are in the double digits, which is um, very unusual um, for uh, rare earths, which is typically characterized by far lower grades than most other deposits that we see around the world. Um, we have a flagship asset, which is called Monte Alto. Um, that asset, as I mentioned, very, very high grades of rare earths. What's important is that the grade not only is very high overall, but also has quite a bit of both the light rare earths, the NDPR, but also the heavy rare earths, the, the dysprosum and terbium, the DYTB. Um, and that's critical because it's those heavy rare earths that are quite, um, that are totally monopolized by China. And therefore, the Western world needs a, a, a credible, viable ex China supply of these heavy rare earths. And Brazilian rare earths could be that next company. Um, so, um, but the interesting thing about our projects, and you know, we, we, we discovered this whole area of Brazil early on. Uh, and there was nobody there looking for rare earths. So we were able to fly under the radar for a few years. Um, we did quite a big capital raising prior to our IPO. We brought in some very high profile investors, um, some heavy hitters, so to speak. Uh, and they funded us to actually acquire that entire province. So what started with roughly 400 square kilometers of ground is ballooned into over 4,000 square kilometers of ground today. And we basically have a f total monopoly of this rare earth province with dozens of discoveries already made in the last three years. So this could be a real um, perennial producer of rare earths for a long, long time. Not only are the grades very high, the logistics are amazing. We're right close to the coast. We have power, gas, water, sealed roads right at our doorstep. And we have the largest petrochemical complex in the southern hemisphere, a driving distance away, uh, which would make um, processing these rare earths far cheaper than if we had to process very far away from the source of reagents. So all these things come together to make BRE like quite an exciting story um, and, a very, and, and a company that has a very high potential to go into production, which I think is what investors you know, have to sort out in this market is there's a lot of hopefuls and there have been a lot of hopefuls for decades and really only two companies have gone into production in any, any scale since, which is MP Materials and Linus. And so I guess the market's looking at who could the next um, company B and, and with all these things coming together, we think we've got a very high chance of being that next company. And of course, we're always talking on Investor News about the core four, the magnetic materials, and Brazilian Rare Earths has the core four, but you were talking about your network and your recent announcement about your pilot scale plant has attracted one of the richest people on the planet, Gina Reinhardt. Can you tell us more about how you drew her attention to your project? Um, Ms. Reinhardt's been an investor since before the IPO, actually. She's been a, a great supporter of the company. Um, 
she was offered to participate in the in the pre IPO capital raising, uh, and she, I'm very glad took up that offer, and she has been a great supporter ever since. Um, yeah, we're very honored to have somebody such you know, of such high profile and also quality on the on, on the register. She's a major shareholder of both Linus and MP Materials, and so she she really loves appears to love the space. I can't speak for her; I've never met the lady, but. Um, yeah, she's been a great um, and very supportive shareholder of ours, and we're very grateful. Operating permit for rare earth pilot plant. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, that's huge because one of the big advantages of our project is that not only do we have very, very high grades of rare earths, um, and the composition of that grade is attractive, as I mentioned, uh, but we also have some incredible co-products. Um, we've got very high grades of niobium, tantalum, and scandium. But more importantly, we've got very, very elevated levels of uranium. Uh, and the reason why that's important is because that uranium could represent a significant co-product for us. Uh, it processes very easily, and it's very easy to make uranium uh, in the same way that you, you process the rare earth. So we can make a uranium yellow cake, for example. We've done that, uh, and we've demonstrated that. The reason why the pilot plant was such big news for us, and it led to a, a good re-rating of the stock, is that it shows that producing uranium and rare earths in the area of Brazil that we're in is accepted. Uh, it's going to be, um, it's not going to pose a problem for us. And in fact, we expect it to become a major benefit to us. And so I think that that was a major milestone in our, in our journey was de-risking um, that, that reducing that perceived risk in investors' minds. Well, we always knew it was not going to be a problem. Brazil is a nuclear country. It's comfortable with uranium, but um, you know, having that extra step I think has really helped investors um, remove that risk from their, from their assessment. We've been talking about Brazil a lot and what an attractive country that is for a critical mineral company to be working in. Can you comment on that? Yes. Uh, look, I've, I'm Brazilian born, so I'm biased. <laughs> I love my country. Um, and, um, but I've worked all over the world. I was educated. I grew up in Indonesia, educated in Australia. I've done work in parts of Africa, Asia. Uh, and, and, and Brazil extensively. Uh, and I think Brazil is a great jurisdiction to do business in. It strikes this great balance between, you know, it's to a low cost jurisdiction, low energy costs, low labor costs, um, but it's a country that wants development, it's trying to grow, uh, and it's a country that has a, a very, very skilled labor force, especially in mining. Uh, and, you know, the, the Brazilian government is doing all the right things. You know, we're really pleased. We've had a lot of government support to date. Um, our pilot plant, in fact, is being paid partially by the Brazilian government um, as a grant. Um, Brazil has been really incentivizing of downstream processing uh, in, Bra uh, in Brazil. Um, there is the area that we are in northeastern Brazil, for example, there are significant tax benefits to doing downstream processing. In fact, there's a benefit called Sudene, which should see a 75% reduction in income tax for 10 years at least for projects like ours, potentially. Um, so that, 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 that program is available. We need to apply for it, so I'm not representing that we're going to get it, but it should be available to a company like ours. Uh, but the Brazilian government has been very encouraging of, um, finally, the right thing, which is let's add more value in Brazil. Let's uh, do downstream processing in Brazil. Let's you know, make sure Brazil becomes a very significant center for critical minerals in the future, because it has the mineral endowment to do so. Um, and so I think it's about time that Brazil takes that attitude that I'm really glad it has. It's been very, very different from historically where Brazil has been a very extracting country where we extract raw materials simply to send them overseas and buy them back in, you know, finished form. Brazil is now encouraging us to actually add more value in Brazil, which I think is the right thing to do. So this is a stock that's nearly a billion dollar market cap has almost tripled since listing in the late fall in 2023 and of course has been making timely news releases. What should shareholders be looking forward to in this upcoming quarter? Yeah, so we are continuing to advance the work around Monte Alto. Um, the drilling will come to uh, a completion, um, we expect in the coming months, where we'll have drilled out the resource and we'll know the exact size of it and we'll be able to issue a statement to the market with uh, our maiden Jork resource uh, estimate from, from Monte Alto, the, the, the hard rock. Um, we'll also um, then be completing a scoping study where we'll put all that into you know, economic terms and show investors the economic potential of that deposit and, and 
you know, some of the likely pathways towards production and how it could be funded and the size of the, the funding requirements and so on. Um, we also have, you know, beyond Monte Alto, like I said, we've got a dozen or so new discoveries we've made in the last um, couple of years and we continue to drill those and we expect new deposits will be delineated and, and announced in due course. There's a lot more work around, you know, extracting um, value from our coal products. So yes, we, we've, you know, we've proven that we can extract the rare earths and turn them into a carbonate and the expectation is they'll be turned into oxides and, you know, th those are all sellable products and we've demonstrated we can make a uranium byproduct like a yellow cake. Um, but we're still working on the niobium, the tantalum, and the scandium, and we hope to, you know, show the market that those two can be turned into economic products. Um, in addition, we also own, this is <laughs> as an aside, we own an incredible um, bauxite asset within BRE, which just, it, we inherited as one, of, as, you know, in, in our effort to consolidate the whole belt, we bought a bunch of tenements, and some of those tenements uh, happen to uh, hold significant amounts of bauxite. Uh, that has been drilled extensively, over 60,000 meters of drilling. Uh, and we're shortly going to issue a, a bauxite uh, mineral resource estimate, chore compliant. Uh, and then subsequently uh, a scoping study around the bauxite. It looks like that has significant value. Uh, and what that will, the current plan is to potentially spin that out into its own separate entity so that any Brazilian rare earth investor becomes then a bauxite co investor too. Uh, and that, that takes on its own life. So there's plenty of news flow coming um, over the, you know, the, the next six months or so that should keep the market pretty excited. And we have, of course, we have the core four, we have the rare earths, we have the byproduct of uranium and the bauxite project. For those of you interested in finding out more about Brazilian rare earths, please go to the following website. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much, Tracy. Appreciate your time.